many people are there yeah you are in mauritius static uh, discharging presentation static discharge it is a point of discussion rather than reading what the static discharge what is your understanding about static discharge sir when mm -hmm. aircraft is moving in a fluid so because of the resistance between the movement of the aircraft and the fluid uh, charges are transferred from that medium to the surfaces uh, to the surface of the aircraft and these charges accumulation are going to disturb especially the hf and vhf uh, communication system so we need to dissipate those charges therefore we have this static dis uh, discharges installed in our uh, aircraft at different trailing gauges and tips uh, position right so the charge is created on the aircraft skin because of the friction, friction with the air, dust, water molecules, gases, etc, etc. And this charge remain on the fuse last. So we provide the bonding and jumper so that we will bring the whole aircraft on the same potential, right? But that potential is much higher than the normal environment. So what happened? The static discharger wicks are, uh, because of the corona effect, it is discharging the charge outside the aircraft in like a showers, okay? If you will see this through the laser or some other light, you will find like it is a shower, it is going out from the aircraft structure. If these are not there, then what happens? It will start going from the antennas, especially the navigation and communication antenna, where they operate at a very low voltage. Signals are very poor. So there is a strong chances of having an interference with the signal. So the pilot will get disturbance on their navigation and communication system, all right? So they have provided a clear path with the bondings, jumpers, and then finally it goes through the static discharger phase. There is no electrical device, nothing else. It works on the principle of the corona effect. The effect is something like when the some potential is created on some surface, then it is start automatically going through the surface. You consider it like this static discharger is like a capacitor and the capacitor size is very small. So the charges keep on going into the static discharger and then it is start overflowing once it crosses the threshold value. It's something like if I have a water bottle in my hand and I keep a cup in my hand, I keep on pouring the water, right? The cup will hold the water as per the capacity. After that, if I'll keep on adding it, it will overflow. So same thing happened with this static discharger. There is no electrical connection, nothing else. It's simple and mechanical rod. High mechanical strength because it needs to sustain the high amount of the current flow. That's why you have seen in the lightning strike conditions, some of the static discharger burn, melted. Okay. Some of the static dischargers get melt. But that is in a case of lightning strike. A normal ESDS, normal EMI, nothing will happen. They will keep on discharging the potential. So, there are the three, four phenomena, EMI, ESDS, uh, lightning strike. Actually, static discharger wicks are not designed to sustain the current because of lightning strike. They are not designed for lightning strike. They are designed for EMI and static charge. But in the process of lightning strike, some of the charge, when it passes through the static discharger mix, if they can withstand, it is good. Otherwise, they will burn from the exit route. Right. If they are designed for the lightning strike, then they will not be burned. They will remain there and they will discharge the electric charge. So aircraft will be safe, but it is not. Because the amount of the charge comes is a very heavy, very heavy charge. Right. Probably if you Google, you will find the fuselage is melted. Hmm? Fuselage is melted because of the lightning strike. It is so strong. Have you seen the trees are uprooted because of lightning strike? Yeah. These yes. are uprooted. Yes. 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 People, yes. people get a severe shock, severe shock when they are on the headset on aircraft. One of my colleagues in 2007-8, he was on handset, lightning strike happened. He was thrown away from his position. He was 
hospitalized in ICU for 15 days. Thank God he recovered. Lightning is a very, very high intensity electromagnetic effect. You have to have a, a special precautions when thunderstorm lightning strikes are there at the airport. Lot of procedures are there. You have to stop, you have to disconnect, no wire communication, only the hand signals, etc. etc. No refueling as well. No refueling, servicing has to be stopped. Lot many things are there. Anyway, why it is important for me? Because when the aircraft is passing through the lightning strike, it will create an interference for the navigation and communication system, right? Localization of the static discharge, this disposition of the static discharge is used for the dispatch of static electricity. And they are located around the extremities of the aircraft. So they are located in extremities so that the charge once it is discharged should not come to the fuselage again. It will discharge into the environment. So that's why they are on the extremes of aircraft. Hmm. Otherwise, they would have placed it on the fuselage, but no, because it will come back to the fuselage again. Part of it. Hence, they are on the extremes. Do you think still the charge is there on the fuselage after uh, discharging from the static discharger wicks? Or 100% it is discharged? Some charge will always remain, I believe. Yeah. Yes, some charge. So how this charge will go? When it lands. When it lands, then through the tire? Or we put anchor? Through the tire. Well. And the wheels. Say again, no, say again. When it lands. Mm -hmm. so Point of landing. Table, sir. One by one, please. Anand, go ahead. I said, sir, uh, usually uh, through the grounding cable as well uh, when the airplane comes. Or if not, uh, uh, we have to anchor it to a grounding point. Are you are you doing anchoring in the ground line? No, I'm usually just no, with is... the refueling truck, sir. That is when the refueling truck is there, okay? Yes. Normally, uh, okay. through the wheels of the airplane as well. During landing. Through the during landing ice. through the wheels of the airplane. Why yeah. through the wheels? Wheels are conductive. No. Huh. Yes, the the tires yeah. are conductive. Yeah. Rubbers are conductive. Tires are conductive or not? A special rubber for an aircraft. Yes. No, I'm asking you, tires are conductive or not? Normally, no. Yes, sir, they do. Tire, they are quite conductive. Yeah, see how much difference is in your opinion, gentlemen. You are in aviation. <laughs> no, aircraft tires are conductive. Thank you. Now you are right. Aircraft tires are conductive while your car tires are not conductive. Yeah. So the static charge which remains on the fuselage, it will discharge through the tire on the ground. But always there is a small amount of the charge remain. It is an extra precaution during the refueling process that they will connect the fuel bowser and the aircraft to the ground. Why? Because when the fuel is pumped into the tank at the 40 PSI pressure, 50 PSI pressure, still there is a static charge created because of the flow of the fuel. Right. It is not because yeah. it is on the aircraft. It is developed is during it? the process of refueling. Yeah, this is to balance uh, the potential potential between uh, the 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 fuel uh, refueling uh, engine and uh, the aircraft to be yes. in the same uh, potential. Correct. So yeah. we will put them the same potential and probably we connect to the ground host also. Yeah. Right. Very good. So static dischargers, two type of static dischargers are installed on the aircraft. One is a flat, another is at 30 degree. Just with the localization effect at a different, different locations. Some places it is a flat, some places it is 30 degree. So this is 30 degree angle. Messages on the ECAM you will get, which we have already seen, BHF 2 and 3 emitting, HF 1, 2 emitting, it is optional. 
if they are transmitting for more than 60 seconds. So in the ECAM, you will get the engine warning display message, VHF 1, 2, and 3 emitting more than, if they are transmitting more than 60 seconds. That happens sometimes because the switch is stuck after transmission, right? HF 1 or 2 continuously emitting. Single chime will come, master caution will come, no page will call up, no local warning, inhibited in flight speed 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. That is during takeoff and landing. So this message will not come. Okay. Any questions, guys? So far? No? It's okay. Akars is here. We already discussed Akars yesterday. So we will not talk about the Akars. Akars is already done. If you want to me to repeat, I can do it again. But there is no point. All right? What I can do the best, a car has reached to the next level, which is an initial 4D. I'll show you a small video. Maybe aircraft so that holdings and with the help of DCDUs from the ground connections, that is a ATSU, they are able to you know regulate the flight timing, the speed of the aircraft, so that the other aircraft flight will not disturb. Okay, so this is what we already discussed about the car system. Architecture is same. Hmm? All these menu options is same like ACRS. Now you will find ATSU here, not the ACRS. And rest of the things are pre-flight, in route, post-flight, UTC timing, maintenance menu, flight log. All these options are available in new attempts or Air traffic information management system. This is RMP. In case of ACARS failure, what will happen? The ACARS management unit failed or selected off. VHF3 can only be used for the audio management in normal mode communication. So if ACARS has failed, then you can use the RMP3 for voice mode if required. So how to use the VHF3 for the voice mode? You can just select VHF3 and select the voice frequency. Select the voice frequency and transmit it. So they will swipe the window. This is your voice frequency. This is ACARS. They will swipe the window now. Now ACARS is on VHF, sorry. RMP is on VHF mode or VHF3 is on voice mode. That's how. In case ACARS unit fail, you will see the dash, dash, dash. So it is not transmitting the information to ground. Next is satellite. Yeah. Can you just repeat a little bit from the previous what you like this? A cars came here, sir, on the MCD on the control panel. Okay, see, in case, this is a normal ACARS transmission mode, okay, data transmission. Nowadays, you will find the data link. ACARS board is not used nowadays. They use data link. You got my point, Omar. Initially, in 2010-11, when it started, it was only ACARS. So later on, they changed the word to the data link. It is a ATEMS, Air Traffic Information Management System. So you will find here data link nowadays. Now, let us say you want to bring it to the voice mode. So how you can bring it to the voice mode? First, you select the voice frequency on the standby window. Once you select the voice frequency, then use the transmit button. Once you use the transmit button, they will swap the frequencies. So mm -hmm. this frequency came in the active window. A car went into a standby window. So now you are on the voice mode. You can have a voice call through VHF3. Okay, Clear? sir. Sir, and uh, one more question, sir. How, how, like, for example, now we have data link. How this will come here in first place, sir? Like, no more, normally we see here an active and standby. Both sides, we see the frequencies. Okay. How the see, data link come? Yeah, because... Always this window will have a 
स्टैंड बाय आकार्स लेट अस से नाउ फर्दर यू वांट टू चेंज द वॉइस फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑन अनदर चैनल देन इट विल डिसअपीयर राइट नाउ इट इज शोइंग यू आकार्स एंड दिस इज द वॉइस फ्रीक्वेंसी आकार्स इज आल्सो नथिंग बट इट इज अ वॉइस फ्रीक्वेंसी सॉरी इट इज अ फ्रीक्वेंसी बट दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी चैनल इज फॉर द डाटा कम्युनिकेशन डाटा ट्रांसमिशन ओके शुड आई द सेम थिंग यू कैन डू इट फ्रॉम एमसीडी यू आल्सो let me show you actually sir i have never seen like this uh, written uh, data link on the audio control pan on the radio man frequency frequency that is on rmp1 or rmp2 you have seen not on rmp3 oh okay okay so, thank you now i yeah okay rmp3 okay. is on overhead panel and this is only applicable for rmp3 not for 1 and 2 okay okay sir thank you now i understand sir thank you so much <laughs> from yesterday we are saying it is only rmp3 okay so maybe i'll show you some more page do you see this page which we saw yesterday this is rmp3 maybe let me pull out some more pages here this is the atsu this is a cars management unit in the old time which i i was showing you there these are the software floppies are available for the aoc for the cars for the remote aoc for the data link for interface so so many floppies are used for this purpose and they are all dumped into atsu this is a software loading with the multiple functions sir there is one hypothetical question somebody asked me is that uh, why they use until now floppies why they did not modify it to something like new why they still on floppies i have i have no option about i have no answer about it they use the pdl they use the floppies they use the pcm ci card many things are there yeah. so it it is a kind of someone has to take initiative and replace everything right. there, it is a software maybe it's there is okay satellite communication is not really that important because 320 aircraft it is a optional i have never seen any 320 aircraft with satellite ante unless it is a vip aircraft or commercial aircraft maybe uh, non schedule airline they may have it because it's a costly affair and 320 operation range is in such a way that they will always have a bhf and hf coverage so why you want to Uh, have a white elephant correct because for the calls from the satellite is costly you are paying for the satellite company for these calls am i right so we will not have it but as far as installation is concerned there is a only one control unit which is a sdu satellite data unit internally it has the two functions one is a one is a beam steering unit another is a high power amplifier one of one of them is a beam steering unit another is a high power amplifier and, and there is a an antenna it's a big size antenna is available on top of the fuselage you can see on top of fuselage in the middle section a big size antenna is there which is integrated or sorry intermediate gain antenna iga intermediate gain antenna is there these things are common interfaces LGCIU, MDDU, ADIRS for stabilization and beam steering purpose, MCDU, FWC, ATSU, CFDIU. They are all common interfaces. Audio management is also common interface. Frequency of operation is 1.625 megahertz to 1.66 gigahertz. That is for transmission and reception frequency is different. These frequencies are kept different to avoid interference. Right. so transmission frequency and reception frequencies are different so that there will not be any interference now important thing is how you will select it so selection purpose you have audio control panel but if you have seen the previous audio control panel there was a no sdcu selection correct did you saw that no selection hmm the previous audio control panel there was no 
there was no selections for sdu but in this it is a selection for sdcu can you see here so this audio control panel is a different part number what they have done in this part the top is same no change here right what they have done is they have removed these two buttons marker and ls button from here right they bring pa button here voice on voice or voice and reset they put in the side correct and they inserted two satellite reception nowhere correct they provided two satellite reception nowhere yes correct so with the help of that and probably these are the call buttons these are the this is for the pa and this is the call button for satellite 1 and satellite 2 channel got it so this is one channel and this is another channel so with the help of audio control panel you can make the satellite call clear guys now i'll show you some of the interfaces if you read here the interfaces it is a function of the satcom is reception and processing of the signal via satellite supplying aeronautical services in l band satcom let the aircraft fly within the spot beam coverage to transmit and receive multiple channel voice fax email etc etc whatever you wanted it is composed of satellite data unit and iga which we have seen satellite data unit and iga integrated intermediate gain antenna sdu is interface to the various aircraft systems it contains all data processing functions as well as modem channel tuning synthesizer blah blah all electronic circuitry is inside as far as interfaces most of the interfaces are known to you yes some of the interface which you would like to know why the adirs is connected it provide beam steering signal with relative azimuth and relative elevation so to monitor position. your beam steering, right based on the satellite position where the satellite is so you have to rotate your beam towards the satellite correct because you are communicating with the satellite and the satellite will communicate to the ground based on your signal based on your your request so that's why your aircraft has to move i mean the antenna has to electronically move towards satellite so that's why to provide the beam steering towards satellite adirs is used then cfdiu adsu cabin terminal they are common things iga integrated antenna capable of operating with either 115 volt or 28 volt dc electronically steerable it means mechanically it is not moving it is electronically it is moving because the signals are moved inside the antenna the phase angles so this is nice to know about satellite these are the byte test you can perform the byte test it will tell you about what is a failure what is a pass top high gain antenna linear antenna right all these systems so okay or fail it will tell you the status of byte right any questions gentlemen okay sir now we have left with two small topics one is the cvr another is elt okay so we'll do the cvr now elt maybe after the break cvr is again an equipped for the boat okay as far as 
Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this area we will not discuss magnetic tape CVR and magnetic tape CVR arrays more. Why? Because you will not find any magnetic CVR 320 aircraft. I don't know why they have kept it, but in 320 you will find only solid CVR, no magnetic CVR. They are a history. Now, what is the purpose of the CVR? I think most of you know it. Why, why we have a CVR in the aircraft? It is recording the lot of things in the aircraft, lot of things in the sense, all the audio channels, audio channel for all cockpit communication from pilot channel, from co-pilot channel, from first officer channel, and the fourth one, which is the most important is area mic, right? Three channels, pilot, co-pilot, and first observer. These three channels are coming through audio management unit. Because all the audio originated from pilot station, from first officer station, from first observer station, everything comes to the audio management unit. So in the audio management unit, there is a special card used for this purpose, which extract this information and route it to CVR. Clear? The fourth channel is an area microphone. And the area microphone is not going, it is directly coming to the CVR. It is directly coming to CVR. Nowadays, CVR is solid state cockpit voice recorder. Earlier time it was a magnetic, but nowadays it is a solid state. Everyone knows where the CVR is located. It is in the THS compartment, right? Because that is considered as the safest place. After the aircraft incident, accident or crash, that is supposed to be the safest place in the aircraft. Orange color, fluorescent body, ULV is mounted on it. Underwater locator beacon is mounted on it. So they can sense the aircraft. They can sense the radio signals uh, from six kilometer down the sea. 6,000 meter down the sea, you can receive the signals. ULV, I also discussed in the previous class with SSFDR, if you remember. It is able to transmit the signal for next 90 days. Right? As far as CVR duration is concerned, it is for two hours. Right? It will record the signal for two hours. That is a mandatory requirement. But in present days, the CVR is able to record much more than 2R. Right? They are able to record much more than CVR because the capacity is not a problem now. So minimum 2R is a regulatory requirement as of now. But in the market, the product is available for 25 hours. So and combination recorder is available. So SSCVR and SSFDR both will record on the same unit. So in spite of having two units, you will have only one unit in the THS compartment that will record your voice as well as data parallelly. Correct. Area microphone is able to record the chimes, the warnings, annunciations, certain switch operations also it's able to record when the switch is operated because the switch makes a certain noise. So investigator can look into that aspect also along with the FDR. <coughs> right, gentlemen? Now the question is when the CVR will start recording? You remember the four conditions which I discussed in the FDR? Same logic apply. Power off. You don't remember? These are the four conditions. In flight with engine running or stopped. In flight 
continuously, whether the engine is running or whether the engine is stopped, it will record always. On ground, with at least one engine is running. On ground, during the first five minutes after the electrical energization. Either you energize the electrical power from APU or from GPU. It will record for first five minutes. Right? On ground, up to five minutes after the second engine shutdown. When you shut down the second engine, after five minutes, it will record, then it will shut down automatically. So this is the power control logic for CVR recording or SSFDR recording. Both have the same. Both have the same logic, same power control. Clear? Questions, guys? Hello. Uh, so you said that now nowadays CVR and SSFDR are combined into one unit. So yeah. now physically we don't have two units. That means no. It is a future. Ah. It is a transition period. Product is available in the market. In aircraft, in your aircraft or the new aircraft, you may have a combination recorder, but but in existing aircraft, still we are running with two recorders. Okay. Nevertheless, if your airline has opted for a combination recorder, they may have replaced it. I have seen separate devices. Yeah. As far as I know, in 320 aircraft, it is a separate device. Okay. But maybe the new 320 aircraft which are coming in manufacturing, new aircrafts, they may have a combination recorder. They may have. Right, because overall they have to change it and somewhere they have to start. Clear? Yes. Okay. Solid state recorder, erase button must be pressed. Now, erasing also I discussed in the previous class. First of all, as far as I know, none of the regulator will allow you to erase the SSFDR or SSCVR recording. They will not allow. The moment you land here, in case erase function is there, they will ask you to remove it. Remove the CVs, remove the wire, tie the CV, put the collar, power is out. Correct? So you cannot do the CVR erase function or SSFDR erase function. Again, it may be there for the VVIP flight, Emiri flights, President flights, Prime Minister flights. Provision may be there. Right? If regulator permit. In case erase is allowed, then what are the conditions for erasing? So erasing is possible when you press this button for two seconds and the condition is erase is only possible Aircraft should be on the ground. Right and left man landing gear are compressed. That is a weight on wheels and parking brake is applied. This is the condition. Means you are on ground, parking brake is applied, and the both land gear are on ground. Weight on wheels, not on jack. Right? Aircraft should not be on the chair. There should be weight on wheels. Then only you can erase it. If the engines are shut down, CVR must first be energized for erasing purpose. So you have to put on the ground power control manually. You have to put on the ground power control manually. CVR test is initiated. Test of the CVR. It is a simple test in the cockpit. CVR test is initiated by pressing the switch for 0.5 second. Right? CVR test button is there. Press it for 0.5 second on the recorder panel. Once activated, this function make an extensive set of function tests to determine the integrity of system and result in one activation of the status light, LED light. So 
LED light on the solid state CVR will come on. Bite indicator give an indication of the health of the SSCVR. If the CVR detect a fault, require removal of the unit from the aircraft. Bite indicator will activate and will remain active until repair is accomplished. Prior to test, CVR must be energized by pressing the ground control button if engines are not running. If you see the interface with the CVR, three channels are here. Pilot, first officer and third occupant. This input is coming from audio management unit. Right? All these three channels are coming from audio management. Fourth is here. Fourth channel is here. Microphone. This microphone is having a pre-amplifier and it is directly connected to CVR. It is directly connected to the CVR. Okay, power interlock circuit, the logic which I have talked, it is here. It is shown by a block diagram, but all those conditions are accomplished with the help of the relay logic. All those conditions are established with the help of Really logic. Maybe subsequent slide I have, so I will show you how it is being done. If you want to erase it, if you want to erase it, so when you erase, when you want to erase it, first of all, your parking brake should be on. Switch must be pressed. Landing gear must be down and low. So only then this signal will be thrown to erase. Correct. Because this has to close, this will close when the relay is energized because the parking brake is applied. Clear, sir? Uh, sir, yes. why, why we need to erase the erase, sir? And uh, do we have to do this uh, on time to time basis for some memory per problem or what is it? Why? You are not supposed to erase it, first of all. <laughs> You are not allowed to erase it even. Omar. Yes, sir. You are not allowed to erase it. I am telling you the feature is available, but regulator will not allow to erase it. But okay, this will be automatically erased, right? No, sir. No? There is no automatic erase. What you are saying, it is an automatic recycling is there. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. You are not erasing. It is a recycling. It is overwriting on the solid state memory. Because every day you are not removing it. So what happens? Your last two are recording must be there always. So what you can do? You have recorded. Now the first in, first out. You call the term first in, first out. The first one which is recorded, maybe three days before, four days before, will erase first and then keep on overwriting it. First in, first out. Clear? Omar, I told this logic in case the regulator permit, then only you can erase by this logic. Okay, sir. Thank you. So this is a CVR recorders, four inputs coming from the audio management unit. They have their Inputs coming from the boom set, microphone, audio mic, etc., etc. So it is processed in the audio management unit card, and then it is done. Yes, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, sir, actually in the last diagram there was TKS only shown. Is anything specific for TKS that is being shown there? Like we have also EGPWS alerts and many other alerts. Why specific TKS? Where? See, this one. Yeah. Why the TICAS is only shown here? Yeah, because we also have other systems alerts. Why we have specified TKS? In text, there is nothing written about the TKS as well. Nothing. So nothing you know, is written about it. It is just oh, a symbolic, yeah. I think. Oh. So I, I thought if you have some information on it, so please share. Otherwise, we can ignore it. No. Recording will be there for everything. See. Yeah. It is not only for the TECAS. I believe it will be for everything recording will be there because the area microphone will record everything. 
So maybe in th in this diagram something is wrong. Then I think it should it is wrong. The ticket should not be here. It is wrong. I think so because we don't have anything in the tax as you well. You may be correct about the. You ticket. may be correct because yeah. I have never seen that ticket especially mm. should be here. Yes, sir. Maybe I will check with the Airbus diagram uh, okay, in sir. the break time whether it is there or not. But this is Thank also you, Airbus photo only. Okay, sir. Okay, so these are the formats which is coming from the audio management unit for the recording purpose. The signals, isolators and everything is there. This is the area microphone which is available in the cockpit, uh, very close to the compass between the top of the windshield pans. Both windshield pans, it is there. Okay, these are the logics, power control logic. So it is defined with the help of the relay logic. So here the various conditions are defined like ground and flight conditions, five minutes after the power switches on, right? Engines are running or not running. So all these logics are defined by with this relay, various relays logics. As far as you know, the conditions need not to go through the relay logic. Right, sir? That's all about the CVR. Any questions? It's okay. No. Let's take a nice break and then we'll be back with EA.